Good morning, Raiden. I see that we are the only ones in class today. <laughs> Me, you and our host. Um, welcome to our class. Um, just uh, hopefully it will pick up a bit later. Um, so I made a note yesterday we stopped, we started with Opsteller. Um, um, and we stopped with the uh, Scrivener the Opsteller, but you know, I like to just quickly um, recap that. Um, what is a descriptive essay and how to write a descriptive essay. So um, I want you to concentrate with me and to um, to enjoy this lesson with me and make take lots of photos and, and enjoy this. Okay, so a beskrywen the essay, then also known as, as a descriptive essay. There is a um, resource there, oopsie, a resource for you to, um, if you quickly want to take a, a snappy of that, but let's start. So uh, a beskrywende opstel beskryf of iets of iemand aan die leeser. So it is a essay that describes something or someone to the reader. Here um, is you're almost an artist, so you are painting a picture but with words and which is usually um, it's what is advisable for a beskrywende opstel is usually using idioms and imagery um, which you will then also know, uh, know as um, personification and metaphors and similes and onomatopoeia. Then a very important aspect is using your, your senses, syntia in Afrikaans, so what you word, what you see, what you um, reik, um, what you feel. And it is also a verhaal what you vertel. So just like a, a narrative essay, you're also telling a story, but the focus of this essay is rather on describing something. Um, and therefore you must be practical. Um, don't, um, um, don't over, I almost want to say over compensate the, the essay. And then be creative. It's very important. A descriptive essay, um, the reason we should be creative is because it's, it's going to be a long essay if you only describe a few, one or two things. So you must be creative and describing loads of stuff um, in the essay, but to make sure that, that it is a, um, a creative process for you. Very important to note is you are supposed to um, use something like connotative and denotative um, um, Pro, uh, aspects in your essay. For instance, um, connotative then referring to the figurative meaning and denotative um, um, then referring to the literal meaning of something. A very nice way of writing a descriptive essay as well. Use um, adverbs and adjectives in your essay, but remember just with the verhalen, the opstel, a narrative essay, you should rather um, focus on on using not too much of uh, not too much adjectives or adverbs, um, because it, it then it just becomes a whole essay with lots of words in it without any meaning. So they must always on any essay there should be a reason you're writing what you're writing, and then you work from that. So there must be a purpose why you chose a specific topic. Therefore, it can be fictional or realistic, so you can um, make something up completely, or you can write something realistically. And it's also um, advisable that you perhaps do some research, if possible. Um, and then again, just with the verhaal and the opstel, you can also give your own opinion and what you see. Okay, remember the key word there, a print, a picture. You're creating a picture, painting a picture with words. And now, of course, the example that I'm going to give you. So, um, you know, I'll translate as we go on. So this is an introductory paragraph to a descriptive essay. And the title then, of course, being Die Karua. Verskroeende sand, klein faal bossies en bome, wat oortrek is van namiddag son. Die jimmel is a diep blau koepel en die son a vierbal. Levenloos zou jij wou denk, maar denk weer, de karoe het een leven van zijn eie. So he's describing how um, the sand is looking and how the, the trees is looking and how the karoe, um, the sun and the, and the um, heavens are looking. And then he's saying, lifeless, that's what you would think. But think again, the karoe has a meaning or a life of its own. So that is typically a, a, um, a 
describe in the Opstal's um, introduction because he's describing um, in his introduction very carefully a few aspects of the title then, Dika Rua. So take a picture of this and then we'll go on to the next one. Is there any questions thus far? Okay, so then we are going on. Raiden, no questions. I thank you for responding there. Um, and I always see it's, it's the same kids that are here. Thank you so much that you're pitching for class so early in the morning. All right, let's go on. Then a bespiegelende or a speculative essay. Now guys, this one, and, and actually you must always concentrate in my class, but this one you must listen carefully. So speculative essay is actually when you give a, a statement and you philosophize over it. So you have an Afrikaans, you philosopher over um, So there will be a bold statement that you perhaps give, and then you are going to have your opinion or what you believe or an emotional reaction and your feelings that you that you give uh, with regards to that. Um, it also tells us more about a personal um, personal um, gebeurtenis or ervaring wat, wat jy kon gehad het. And you are trying to convince the reader about what you are philosophizing about. Please don't write a bespiegelende opstel and then um, make it more than it is. I keep forgetting that word. Um, to, over, to exaggerate. Don't exaggerate in a bespiegelende opstel because you lose people's attention when you do that. You start to irritate people um, if you use too much... Um, uh, for instance, if you use too much adjectives and stuff, then and you make it um, worse than it is, you, um, too ex you're exaggerating, then you are, are losing your reader's attention. Remember, when you write a bespiegelende opstel, you are philosophi uh, philosophizing, uh, I can't say that word, over it. So you philosophize that word. Um, and you are giving your opinion and what you see and your emotional reactions and, and feelings. But remember to always think about what you're saying. Um, you don't want to upset your reader necessarily. And you want to keep your t the attention of the reader. All right. Gebruik aanhalings of quotes. And um, that's something I enjoy to put into my um, slideshows as well, is to go and look for, for quotes of uh, not even just famous people, but just people who said something that really um, that touched me. And that's also common say philosophia. So you use quotes um, to to give or well, to to staff your opinion, in other words, to to um, help your opinion to come forth. And then also with a bespiegelende opstel, you are allowed to beskryf. You are more than welcome to beskryf something. But remember again, and this too works hand on hand. If you describe something, sorry guys, it's a bit early. <laughs> remember to, to write in a logical and systematic way. Because again, if you describe too much, you might lose the attention of your reader. Or your reader are going to focus so much on trying to understand what you're describing that later on, the essay doesn't read logical or systematic. Um, and by this time, um, you should also th think about when a bespiegelende opstel, a uh, not a descriptive essay, a speculative essay, you should also use a lot of pronouns, personal pronouns. And that is again, ek and jy, in my, and those are the personal pronouns that you can use. So guys, please remember how important this is uh, for a bespiegelende opstel. And then I would like you to take a picture of this quickly. Oopsie. Um, and remember now, bespiegelende opstel is a speculative essay. Sorry, I didn't put it in there. Um, and these, this is the way you should write a speculative essay. Things to consider. Um, and remember as well, as you now take the picture, listen to me. Um, after this PowerPoint, we're doing the scribe process. Now you are going to have an assessment week and I'm not sure, not sure how it's going to work at this stage, but um, I'm probably going to give you something like an essay to write or um, just an introductory paragraph to write. So um, you must really take pictures and, and um, pay attention in class, please. 
Okay, and let's quickly have a look at an example of a bespiegelende opstel or a speculative essay. So, this person wrote the title, The Oomlik van Waarheid in English, The Moment of Truth. And I'm going to read a sentence and then try and translate it for you. Amal beleef die een of ander tijd daar die oomlik wat de mense lewe totaal verander. All of us have that moment in life where our um, life totally um, the, the changes. A oomlik wat jy wens nooit moes gebeur het, a moment that you never wished come true. A oomlik wat jy nie kan vermy of kan ontsnap nie. So a moment that you can't necessarily um, not, not happen, so you can't deny it. The oomlik van waarheid, the moment of truth. And look how powerful this is. This child went and they wrote the title and it actually connected. Um, he brought a title and the introduction paragraph, he linked it, which is very nice. So you you getting the reader's attention again, the moment of truth. So um, that is then your bespiegelende opstel. And... Um, uh, uh, an idea there. So may I quickly ask if you guys have any questions about a verhalende opstel of a descriptive essay of a verhalende opstel. Take a picture of this guys and please I want to beg you again if at the end of this lesson you don't understand something just pop me an email or if you want um, me to explain something to you again or if you want an example of something I'd really help where I can. Um, because I don't, you go, I know that it's difficult in this time not to have a teacher in class every day. So, yeah, so then you have somebody to help. Okay, guys, I see no questions, so I'm moving on. This is a very important essay, um, and it's a very difficult essay to write if you don't follow the steps um, that um, I'm also going to discuss now. So, this, it's called the Argumenterende Opstel or Argumentative Essay. And this is almost like you're a, um, a lawyer in court. You give a statement and you're going to defend it. So, um, for instance, it can be subjective because, uh, well, it most, an uh, argumentative essay is a subjective essay because you have your own opinion or your own belief and you are going to try and convince the reader to um to follow that argument or also to believe that argument. So in Afrikaans subjectief, je neem jou eie standpunt in en probeer die leeser oortuig. You want to convince the reader to also believe in the argument that you are giving. Jy verdedig, you're defending a case, just like a lawyer. You've got your own meaning, your eie mening, and then you must oorspronkelijk, um, and then you must give it uh, on, a, on a very creative way, for instance, you're creative and uh, um, you must give it to the reader and, and try to convince the reader. So again, you argumenteer, you are argumenting, and then usually you write it in the present time, die teenwoordige tyd. And then guys, gebruik woorde wat rede, oorzaak, op eenvolging, voeg woorde, logische op eenvolging aan. Dus so bijvoorbeeld, dit bewys dat, maar doch de omdat en daarom. Listen to me carefully. So when you are argumenting, these are the, the words that you may use. Dit bewys dat, so it proves that, maar, um, which, which means but, doch yet. Um, om dat, because, and daarom, therefore. So these are the type of words or phrases that you're going to use in an argumentative essay, just like a lawyer in court. Okay, in English there, use words that indicate reason, cause, sequence, conjunctions, logical sentence, uh, sequences, such as, it proves that, but, yet, because, and therefore. And there is an um, amazing PDF that you can find on that website. And um, there, um, with that will also help you with um, arguments of essays. All right, so take a picture quickly and then we'll go on to the example. Okay, I'm going on. Um, guys, let's... Okay, and then also, sorry, they say the, it must be logical, which is quite... Um, um, also, guys, think about it. Uh, an argumentative essay must be written in a systematic and logical way um, because you've got something to prove. And then they say here, what is the nut daarvan om te argumenteer? Why do we have to argument? Because you want to give people your opinion and you want to convince them to follow your opinion. 
En you also want people to think the same way as you do. So argumenterende opstel wil precies diezelfde doen. Dit wil oortuig, it wants to convince, it wants to, um, to inf have an influence on what you think, your thinking pattern. And then, listen to what this person did here. So this is also an introductory paragraph. The title is Teeners, Teenagers. And in the introduction paragraph, this guy just went and he wrote one sentence. He made an argument. He made a bold statement. Teeners is the ondankbaarste species op die aardbol. Teenagers is the most unthankful species in the, uh, on, the, on the earth ball. <laughs> listen to that translation okay guys so that's an entire introductory paragraph he literally just went and he wrote a um a bold statement and uh, from there of course the body of the sa will unfold so please take a picture and then we go on guys you must stop me if i'm too quick now so you must really try and and um ask if there's something that that you would like me to explain again Look, I know it's Friday. Even me, I'm sitting here sleepy. Um, but luckily, we can sleep in tomorrow and Sunday. Okay, any questions? Raiden said um, nope earlier, but what about the rest of you, Max and uh, Bule and Ono Kabetsi? It's a good speed. <laughs> Thank you. That's good to know. I, I, I will try not to go any slower then or faster. JD, guys, are you all okay? Let me hear from you. All right, I'm going on. Right, the next one. A beredenerende opstel, argumentative essay. Guys, important um, essay as well. Because this is also an argumentative essay. But here, you're not just giving an argument. We're literally also going to... Um, in Afrikaans say ons jy redeneer, jy redeneer. I don't know what's the English word for that. You are trying not only to convince the reader here, but in a way yourself as well. So here, remember with the argumentative essay, you give your opinion and you are trying to convince the reader to follow your opinion. But with a beredenerende opstel, you give both sides of the story. For instance, um, or not for instance, it is also objective. Here, no emotions should come in. It's your side of the story and the other side of the story, and it must be objective, written without any emotion. You don't have to convince the reader here, because already there is two, uh, two sides of the story given, and it's most probably the reader's side of the story. The lesser but slight self, so the reader will decide, I'm choosing this or that side. And you don't have to convince the reader, because both sides of the story are given. So they say also here, geer die probleem reeds in die inleidende paragraaf. So remember now, just with the uh, argument of essay, that, that child went and they wrote a bold statement, saying that teenage is the most ondankbare species op die aardbol. That was his entire introduction in paragraph, which is very powerful. He made a statement and he's trying to, to convince the reader. But here as well, you're going to put a bold statement in the introduction paragraph, but remember, it might be a bit longer because you're going to give the, the, um, your problem or your statement as well as the other statement. Again, logical. You must always write logical, especially in a type of formal essay like argumentative or beredenerend. Um, it's not a, it's, I almost want to say it's not an airy fairy type of essay. You, you're going to write an argument. And Strangely enough, even with a redenerende opstel, you're going to use emotive tal. So there's going to be a bit of emotion, although it is objective. The reason I say it's objective is because you give your side of the story but, and the other side of the story. But you cannot change that. So you must um, bite your tongue and just give the, the sides of the story without changing it. But whenever you're writing about your side of the story, you can maybe put a bit of emotion in there. You had a near your standpoint. So you, you, you're um, giving your side of the story and, and his side of the story or her side of the story. And you're trying to convince yourself in this river God. Guys, with any essay, but especially with a beredenerend and an argumentative essay, navforsing is key. You need to do navforsing for each and every essay, if possible. And then, 
we write a bit of the near and the opstyle in the tenwoordige tijd, which is the present tense, the here and the now. And this is an example, but quickly take a picture. I'm going to count till five, then I'm going on to the example. Okay, so let's take a picture. Uh, not take a picture, let's go to the example. All right, guys, uh, listen to this one. Technologie het ons levens verbeter. And just remember, I said yesterday, you always, always give me a title. Sommige mense is vast oortuig daarvan, dat technologie die duivel self is. Terwijl ander weer glo, dat het absoluut fantastisch is. Some people believe that technology is the devil himself, while other people believe that it's actually that it's absolutely fantastic. Amal moet echter something. But we all must agree. Diesta is it moeilijk om jou wereld sonder technologie voor te stel. These days, it is difficult to imagine your, your life and your world without technology. Niemand kan technologie blameer vir wat verkeerd loop in die wereld nie. Nobody can blame technology if something goes wrong in the world. A mens moet eerder naar die mense wat technologie verkeerd gebruik daarmee blameer. So we should or rather focus then on people that use technology wrong. Guys, look here. That is the, the first um, argument. People believe, some people believe that technology is the devil himself. The second argument, others believe that it's fantastic. But everyone, now we brings it together, must agree that it's difficult to imagine a life without technology. And then here, niemand kan blameer word vir wat verkeerd loop in die wereld of vir technologie nie. So in other words, nobody can blame technology. That's again the first argument. Second argument. But we can blame those who use technology wrong. So do you see here, even in the introduction paragraph, the person or the, the, that wrote this essay gave his both arguments. And remember what I said with a bit of near in the opstel? In your introduction, both sides of the argument must be given already. Okay, so let me let me hear from you guys. Have you taken a photo here? Um, and let me go on to the next slide. All right, so let's go on. Oh, I think we're almost done. Yes, so we're going to the next PowerPoint now. So don't get too comfortable or happy. Um, we're going to the next PowerPoint now. <laughs> and I'm going to, to ha I have to start with that one. Otherwise, we're never going to get finished. So please um, remember, I told you yesterday, there's my email address and there's also the Google Drive link where I've put some notes and stuff in for you. So take a picture again and then give me a few seconds to just open the next slide, So. Right, I'm going on. Okay, guys. Um, now we're going to focus on the scrape process. Now that's um, um, the actual writing process. Where how, so I've explained to you now each and every um, essay, type of essay. Now we're going to focus on how... Um, the writing process works. So the first thing is maybe term, term, terminolo uh, terminology. Then we talk about the five W's, then the structure, and then I'm actually going to discuss a rubric with you because I think it's very difficult um, when you write an essay and you don't know what you're going to get marks from. So I'm saying the the scrape process is very belangrijk. As je weet waar om te begin, gaan je sommer vinnig skryfwerk geniet. So if you know how to start and to write, um, then you're going to enjoy um, Scrivewerk. And then Voltaire said, writing is the painting of the voice, guys, important. So you've got a voice inside of you and you want to write what you believe down and it's almost like a painting. So here is some in, um, very 
um, belangrijke wenken as we say, so stuff that is really important when you are planning. So let's do the first one. Beplanning is baie belangrik. Dit sal jou help om een idee te kry van wat jy wil skryf. So it's important when you actually planning, um, because if you start planning your topic, then you will know what to write. So the first step is, of the entire writing process is to go and sit and read your question. Maak seker jy verstaan jou, jou vraag en wat van jou verwacht word. So read your question thoroughly, make sure that you understand what is expected of you, um, so that you um, can start writing. The second thing, besluit wat er thema en type opstel jy gaan skryf. So now you've got your theme that the teacher gave you in the assessment, and now you must decide, unless it's given to you. So sometimes the teacher will say, write a descriptive essay on this topic. But sometimes they'll give the theme and it's up to you what type of essay you're going to write. So for instance, in such a case, you must decide, I've got this theme or this topic. Now, am I going to write a verhalende opstel or a descriptive essay? What am I going to do? And then you must also um, say in your, in your um, beplanning, waar oor jy gaan skryf. So look at the theme of the essay and decide the type of the essay. And then, jy moet besluit vir wie jy gaan skryf en wat die doel van die tekst is. Remember, you are the writer, so you must identify the um, the, the the reason for the text that you're writing. And you must also decide for who you're going to write it to. So are you going to write for teenagers or older people? Are you going to write for those um, who's, who loves adventure and Afrikaans avontuurlistig is? Or is it going to be something that's in the news? Are you going to give some news in your essay? And in your imagination or your mind, ask yourself, why am I going to write about this topic? So just an English thing for yourself, target audience and purpose of text. Um, then you can plan your essay by means of a kopkaart, spinnekop diagram of goalpunt. In other words, a mind map. There I wrote a Ming map, sorry for that. A spider chart and bullets. So that is the, the ways that you can um, write your essay, uh, plan your essays in. All right, um, so let's go. Oh, nee. So let's go on. Denk on who lang die skryfstuk moet wees. Guys, so most of the time the teacher will also say, write a, say a descriptive essay in no more than say 300 words. Um, you must actually go and you must um, make sure that you stay into, into the word count given and consider that when you're planning because it doesn't help that you write an entire page of planning and you've only got say two or three hundred words. Remember, um, I know I used to teach home language and uh, I know that some of the metric essays there is about up to 450 words. So um, that's, that's much more than you should do now, but that's why planning is key because you never know how, how much you will have to write. So uh, then they also say here, when you actually write or plan your essay, Gebruik die vijf wees in die H en bespreek, of ons bespreek dit later in die les. Um, so I've actually um, got pictures and everything of how you can do that. And now, goed om te ontdou en te doen. So stuff that you should remember will for instance firstly be, after you planned, then you only write your first draft. So listen, nadat jy beplan het, moet jy eers jou eerste weergaal beskryf. So you cannot start just writing an essay, your first draft, or just writing the essay from, um, um, as, as, as such. You must first plan, then you start doing your draft, then you edit and everything, and then you go on to your final um, writing. Wanneer jy klaar geskryf het, moet jy jou skryfstuk redigeer, and this is what I'm talking about. Redigeer means edit. And they, that is where you actually um, make changes where, where, where necessary. After you've redigeerd, then it's important for you to proofread. And we proofread to check for language aspects, such as tall and spelling and lees and schrijftekens and constructie. So guys, important. First, you plan. Then you write your draft. Then you edit it, you're you're making changes, maybe changing a character's name or moving um, something around or paragraph or so. 
After you've done that, then you proofread. So you check language aspects. And then you can only do your final. Guys, remember, um, a teacher sits there and she maybe have four or 500 papers to read. And if you write in a bad handwriting or you are, um, it's not concise, it's not really, um, it doesn't make sense, then a teachers get frustrated. They won't necessarily mark you down or anything, but think of the teacher when you're also writing. Nobody wants to sit there. No teacher wants to sit there 11 o'clock at night and sit there with a magnifying glass and, and hope to see um, what on earth this child wrote here. So <laughs> remember, write neatly so that I can see it, uh, what you've written there and concise. Okay, then let up word cases. Gebruik creatieve taal, gebruik woorden vir eiswoord. In other words, guys, look at your vocabulary and make sure that you use creative um, ways of writing the creative words. Again, you can use idioms and um, rhetorical stuff. Um, and then again, um, I can't emphasize this enough. Research is important. And it, it's actually for, sad for me when I see an exam or, or something like that. Um, and then the children didn't have, have, have the, um, the privilege of, of doing research there. Unfortunately, you can't have an iPad or anything with you in, to do research on the internet and so on when you actually um, write a test or exam. But remember what I said, um, make sure that you have a broad idea of what's going on in, in the world so that that is also a part of research. Okay, so the first thing then being, so now I've given you a few tips when writing, but now we're gonna actually start with the planning of an essay. The first one being the five V's in the H. So this stands for V or who. So you can, for instance, now write or, or make a mind map. And the first thing would be V or who. Here, here wat jy identificeer oor wie gaan skryf. Maar dit hoef nie altyd een mens te wees nie. So you're writing, um, you, you're going to identify who you are going to write about. But, in actual fact, you, all, you don't actually have to write about some, like a human being. You can actually write about an animal as well. The second one, what of what. Wat het die wie gedoen? What did the who do? What did the who, um, who did the who, who did the who encountered? Wat gaan gebeur in die story? So, you must write. Um, <clears throat> Danny's, for instance, the, the who, and the what is in a car accident, and where did it happen? Um, up a plaque, it, um, so it maybe happened in Johannesburg City. Just a moment. Sorry. Um, so you can also you can also then say where it happened. So maybe on Table Mountain, or maybe in Johannesburg, or maybe on the moon even. Because remember, you can be creative. Warum of why? Why did this happen? Of course, this then being the reason that you are writing the text. Is it there to make um, the reader nosy, or is it there to give information? Is it there to give news? All right. So. Take a picture of this little slide here, and then we can go on. Okay, we're going on. Right, so this is the five W's, as you may have encountered it before. And then, of course, the hukum. So we have a warum, but we also have a hukum. And it all both refers to why. Here, I just want you to ask yourself, why did the encounters or events take place? Hukum had it plaasgevind. Was there meteorites that came down to earth and then it hit the earth so hard that the poor guy went straight up to the moon? So again, you can be creative. And here is it, but you can plan in a cop card. So again, you can use a mind map. The second thing to keep in mind when you are planning your essay is structure. I cannot emphasize the importance of this enough. Ons focus in hierdie les net op opstellen. So in this lesson, we only focused on opstellen. But later this year, we will also focus on shorter transactional texts like letters and so on and so forth. 
And remember that any essay should be structured. Um, firstly, you always write a title, always. And it's not the question that the teacher gives you in the, in the essay or in the paper. So you can't use 1.2.3's topic as your title. You must make your own title from the topic. Write in paragraphs, people. In my eight years in teaching, I have seen many, many, many Obstella. And sometimes people actually go and they write an entire essay and it's one paragraph without any um, full stops, without any other Leerstekens, um, without capital letters. Now I'm telling you that is, um, whew, that is quite something. So remember, write in paragraphs. Please note this in your introduction. So guys, in your introduction, that is the belangrijkste deal for the opstal. It's the most important part of the um, of the essay because you need to grab the reader's attention. You cannot lose the reader's attention already in um, in the introduction. That is really sad. Okay, the norm is that the inleiding nie langer as five sinnebuur te wees nie. So your introduction should be between one and five sentences. That's the norm. Okay, for my oh guys, please 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 listen to this. Do not ever start an essay with eendag lang lang gelede, once upon a time, or you. Ek wil nie weet, so, so um, ek, you don't start an essay with ek wil jylle vandag vertel nie. No way. Don't start an essay with the word to, or en, of ek wil jylle graag vertel nie. Never ever ever do that. You lose your uh, reader's attention there, and you're also making the teacher angry when you start with something like that. Because you're not necessarily, uh, you're not telling a fairy tale here. And um, as hard as it may sound, people don't always want to know what you think in the first paragraph. All right. Um, sorry, I'm a bit too quick. Take a, a picture of this. This is an important thing. Please. Okay, I'm going on. Um, now we've done the title, we've done the introduction, now we're going to the body of the essay. And here's a tip. Een idee per paragraph. One idea per paragraph. So, um, I used to tell my high school kids, if you're going to write um, an essay about, how, a descriptive essay for instance, on how somebody looks, then um, or on, on somebody. One paragraph should be how the person looks about, or how the person look, and then you go on from there. Remember one main idea per paragraph, and then after that main idea, then the ideas that's the same as the main idea must be in, in that same paragraph. So I'm just going to read it to you there. Elke paragraph het de hoofgedachte. So there is a main idea in each paragraph. En dan gedachtes of ideas but he worth gedachte understand. In English, each paragraph has a main idea and then thoughts and ideas that support the main idea, and that can all be in one paragraph. Paragraphen must verschillende lengths be. Paragraphs must be different lengths. Um, you cannot write a paragraph or paragraphs and they all are the same length. Um, you must also, and I'm going to say this, you can also say tease your reader's eyes. You don't want to bore your reader's eyes. The ideas must logic or both. So logical ideas. It should build logically on each other. And then this is the important thing, guys. Please, please, please don't write an entire sentence over four or five lines. Um, if your sentence is too long, the entire meaning is lost. So short, uh, not short, short sentences, but just a clear idea sentences. Um, let up lees and schrijf teken gebruik. Punctuation, guys, very important. All right, so that is the, the information that I'm giving you on the lichaam or the body of the essay. You may take a picture. <coughs> okay. And then the slot paragraph, the closing paragraph. In the closing paragraph, your arguments come together. No new information you should, should be given in this paragraph. You want to keep the reader's attention 
and you are summarizing and then of course no new information should be given in this paragraph okay um, that is where I'm going to stop for today. So we've done um, planning and we've done the body of an essay. Now from to, um, on Monday, I'll show you examples of that and also examples of planning. I don't want to go on now because then we, I, I'm going to stop in the middle of something that is very important. So guys, enjoy your day, enjoy your weekend, keep safe and I'll see you all on Monday. Bye-bye children.